All right, we've got a couple of attendees who just entered. Uh, welcome, we'll get started um, in just a moment. I wanna give um, everybody just another second or so to get logged on before we get going with the webinar. Um, if you guys, uh, Diane and Piper, since you guys are both here, um, I just wanna make sure that you can both hear me and see my screen. You should see the cover slide with an orangutan on it. Um, if you could just go into either the chat or the Q&A and just let me know if you can see that, that would be really helpful just so I, could, I can make sure that everybody is able to see and hear. All right, perfect. Thank you, Piper. Thanks, Diane. All right, so it might be a smaller crowd today, but that is okay. It's a smaller event. It's a small but mighty crowd. Um, and it's 301, so I'll just go ahead and get started. Um, so hello, everyone, and welcome to our first Giving Day for Apes webinar for 2021. Um, and this one is really all about uh, helping you get started for this year's event. My name is Linda Gerhardt, and I'm the Senior Community Engagement Manager here at Mighty Cause, um, which is the platform that Giving Day for Apes is hosted on. Um, and I've been proud to be part of this event since I think 2017, and I'm really excited to see what everyone will accomplish this year. And I am joined by Jackie Bennett from the Global Federation of Animal Sanctuaries. Hi, Jackie. Hi, Linda. Hello. Oops, go. <laughs> Um, so here's a look at today's agenda. Um, again, this webinar is really all about getting you up and running for the 2021 event. Um, so Jackie's going to be talking a little bit about this year's event, and then we're going to move into some platform focused training. Um, just as a bit of housekeeping, we are recording this webinar. Um, and both the recording and the slide deck will be available on the Giving Day for Apes site within a day or so. Um, and we'll be doing a Q&A session at the end of the webinar. Um, so you have me and Jackie here as a captive audience. So if you have anything you wanna ask related to this year's event or the training that we just did, um, just go ahead and pop that question into the Q&A box or the chat and we will make sure that we have time to get to it um, at the end of the presentation. And with that, I will pass the mic to Jackie. Thanks, Linda. So let me start by welcoming you as we approach the kickoff for this year's Giving Day for Apes. And we're excited to again be working with Mighty Cause, our platform host, to prepare the event. The event will be on October 12th, starting at midnight Eastern time and lasting for 24 hours. We haven't yet finalized the prize structure for this year, but I can say that as with previous Giving Days, we are going to have leaderboards and power hours, among other prizes. So early giving for the event is going to open on September 13th, which gives you nearly a month before the big day to start raising funds. And I know in past years, some participants start their campaigns right at the beginning of early giving. Some really focus on giving day itself or just a couple of days before. And either one of those ways is fine. It's up to you. And I know it often depends on the resources you can put on the campaign. Or maybe you want to have some time pass between another event of yours and giving day. But I just did want to share some information about early giving to you. If you're wondering, do donations come in during early giving? Yes, they do. Um, you know, last year we were a little nervous in the midst of COVID about how the event was going to do. And not only did it break records in terms of total funds raised, but it also had the greatest amount donated in early giving, uh, exceeding $167,000. So that's just some information I thought was interesting and do keep in mind that all online donations that participants receive from the start of that early giving period on September 13th will count towards your organization's leaderboard totals for prizes. And let's go to the next slide. And also, I would just want to express our thanks to our sponsors. Uh, this event was founded by Arcus Foundation, and GFAS became a co-presenter in 2016 and subsequently the sole presenter. And none of that would have been possible without Arcus, Feder Arcus Foundation's generous support. And this year, we also welcome back a longstanding sponsor, the American Anti-Vivisection Society, which will again be sponsoring prizes on the North America leaderboard. And we're also really happy to have a new sponsor this year, the David Bonnet Foundation, which is sponsoring the North America Power Hours. And now for those of you who've registered already, you may have noticed some additional language in our terms of participation. 
while the terms already had language about having allowing no direct contact between apes and the public or other wildlife in the public, an important new document was published earlier this year with the IUCN Primate Specialist Group Section for Human-Primate Interactions. Now, these best practice guidelines for responsible images of non-human primates are now referenced in and incorporated into the terms of participation. And we just ask you to be mindful of these when you are selecting your images for your Giving Day campaign in your individual Giving Day fundraising pages. I also wanted to mention GFAS is going to be presenting a webinar on these guidelines, um, including a presentation by the lead author, Sean Waters, on August 25th. This isn't a webinar on the Mighty Cause platform. It's going to be presented by GFAS. It will be open to anyone uh, from the public at no cost. And we'll hear from Sean about the reasons these guidelines were written and the considerations that went into them. We're also going to hear from a couple of sanctuaries about their considerations when they present images of their work. So I'll send an email probably later this week with a registration link, and we'll also be posting information about that webinar on our social media. But now I'll turn things over to Linda, who will talk about how you can get started on this year's Giving Day campaign. Great. Thank you, Jackie. Um, so yeah, since it's been about a year since most of us have really thought about Giving Day for Apes at this point, I really wanted to kick things off by onboarding us and sharing some of the basics just so we're all on the same page for this year's event. Um, so the first question and the important thing to keep in mind is how does Giving Day for Apes actually work? Um, so on October 12th, your sanctuary will be engaging in some friendly competition for a good cause to raise awareness, raise money, and win prizes. Um, Giving Day for Apes is a 24-hour fundraising marathon. Um, well, your, your sanctuary will be working toward raising money for your own goal, and you'll also be raising money as a group for the Giving Day for Apes event um, and Global Federation of Animal Sanctuaries and their sponsors that Jackie just mentioned will be providing prizes to help keep things interested to keep you and your donors motivated. Um, the Giving Day is also a fantastic opportunity for your sanctuary to engage any sponsors, partners, peer-to-peer um, -peer fundraisers, your board of directors or trustees, and really rally people around the cause of your sanctuary and ape welfare. In terms of what your sanctuary needs to do, first and foremost, hopefully everybody that's on this webinar right now has already done this, but you do need to register for the event. Um, the event is invite only, so once you've received the invitation from Jackie, um, which you already should have received, um, you'll just need to register to let us know that you're participating this year and that you'd like to be included in the event. Um, and as Jackie mentioned, there's some information um, that we need to collect in the registration form. But once you're approved, which is a pretty quick process, Jackie's really on the ball about making sure that you get approved as quickly as possible. Um, you'll just need to update your Mighty Cause profile for 2021 and start planning your fundraising campaign. Um, you'll just need to use all of your channels, your email, social media, your website, any events, if it's safe for you to have in-person events and so on, to promote your campaign and get people excited and engaged about Giving Day for Apes. Um, one of the big elements of Giving Day for Apes has always been peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Um, so so it's not strictly required, but you'll want to think about asking people, especially people in your sanctuary's inner circle, to fundraise to help you increase your footprint and reach on October 12th. Um, and then when early giving starts, you'll just need to put all of these things into motion, easier said than done, and start raising money for your sanctuary. Um, we're going to be going into a lot more detail about fundraising strategy and storytelling and how to win prizes in later Giving Day for Apes webinars. So just make sure you register for those. This one's gonna be a little bit more technically fo focused, um, but we are gonna be going more in depth about how the fundraising part of this works in future webinars. Okay, so with that out of the way, um, I'm gonna move into some of the nitty gritty of what you need to do to get started on Mighty Cause so that you can start planning your campaign for this year. For those of you who participated in the past, um, the dashboard for your organization's profile is where you'll be spending a lot of time gearing up for the event. Um, and it looks mostly the same as it did last year, but some items are in slightly different places. Um, so whether you're new to the event or you've participated every year it's been held, um, you'll want to take a minute, log in, and get oriented to your nonprofit's dashboard on your organization profile, since again, you'll be spending a lot of time there, and this is where all of the tools 
tools and reporting that you'll need for the event are located. Um, it's designed to be intuitive, but one of the very cool changes this year that I wanted to make sure everybody knew about was our new overview screen. Um, this is where you'll find your to-do list if you still have any items on your profile that you haven't completed. Um, and you'll also be able to see and customize your metrics there. That is new this year, and there's a lot you can do with the metrics on your overview screen. So if you're a veteran of Giving Day for Apes, this is a really powerful way to track your progress and track your success. Um, you can set your donor retention metrics there and see how many people you're bringing back from previous years. You can see how much you've raised this year compared to last year. And you also have some charts that you can use to visualize those things. Um, underneath all of your overview, um, you'll find all of your fundraising tools in the fundraising section. So your campaigns, you'll be able to see all of your peer-to-peer -peer campaigns. You'll be able to create new campaigns, hide them. And I just wanted to note that this is now where the matching grants tool is located. Um, so you'll find matching grants under fundraising because that is a fundraising tool. Um, underneath fundraising, you'll have all of your reports all of your reporting, your donation report, your disbursement, disbursement report, and your retention report, which is going to come into play a little bit later um, in the, these webinars. Um, there are a lot of filters and ways that you can adjust the information that you're seeing um, and view your donation history and the donor retention report. It, as I mentioned, is going to be extremely helpful as you're coming up with your outreach uh, plan for this campaign. So really just take some time to get familiar with these tools. Um, for those of you who have another fundraising uh, system that you use or you only participate in Giving Day for Apes, it's it's definitely helpful just to reorient yourself. And especially if you're new this year, um, I'm not sure if we have anybody new on this webinar, but it, you know, you want to get oriented to where everything is. Um, we've also pulled out your checkout flow options. So they have their own menu and sub menu. So that way it's easier to find where you can adjust your donation levels and descriptions update the message on your donation receipts and update that thank you page that people see once they check out. And last but not least, um, on your dashboard, you have your settings, which is where you'll be able to control admin access, check on your disbursement settings, update your legal information, and so on. So this is not particularly exciting content, but this is all very important nonetheless as you get ready for this year's campaign. Uh, when you're logging into your profile to make some updates, there are some key things that we recommend refreshing. Um, first and foremost, you'll want to update your story. Uh, do a check for old and outdated information and think about how you can update it to be customized to your 2021 campaign. Um, this really is the heart of your profile on Mighty Cause, and it's a place where, you, where you'll really want to work to tell the story of your sanctuary and the work that you do. So this needs to be shown a little bit of love each year. Unfortunately, it's not generally an evergreen page that you don't have to update once you update it. Is It is something that you want to go into every year and just make sure that you're keeping it fresh. Um, check on your logo and you can consider updating it, especially if it's out of date. If your logo has changed, um, a lot of organizations will put like a special Giving Day for Apes logo um, on their profile, which is always fun. Um, your logo represents sends you throughout the Giving Day for Apes website and on the leaderboards. So you'll want to make sure that it's up to date and it represents you well. Um, your thank you page and donation message, date donation receipt message are really important to update every year. Um, often when people contact us in a panic and they say that, oh no, a donor saw out of date information, um, this is where they saw it. So you want to take some time and make sure that you're updating your thank you page and your thank you message that's sent out to the donor with your their donation receipt. Um, and we have brought those forward in your dashboard so they're easier to find so that you can really quickly and easily do a refresh for this year's campaign. Uh, your banner image doesn't necessarily need to be changed, um, but just take a look and make sure that it's looking good. Um, one of the first things that people see on your profile when they come to your page is your banner image. So even just adding a new banner image can really make your profile feel refreshed and updated and new. Um, and finally, take a little bit of time to review your media gallery. You can upload some new pictures to make sure that your profile is looking updated and fresh and ready to go for your 2021 campaign. 
Another thing that you'll want to do to get your profile ready for 2021 is update and reset your metrics. Um, we always get a handful of emails from people leading up to the event who are wondering about this. Um, and the good news is that it's really easy to do and you can do it right on your page on your own timetable. So it's a really great thing to do as you're resetting your page for 2021. Um, so when you're on your, your organization's profile in edit mode, you can go to quick edit edit and click fundraising stats. You can also just click on the pencil icon near your goal and where your progress bar is and where the amount, the basically the metrics so-and-so raised this much for your organization. You can click on that little pencil icon as a shortcut to get into that. Um, and first you'll want to change the date that your profile is set to count from. So right now on everybody's page, it's most likely counting your 2020 donations. So you'll wanna go in and change that date to September 13th, 2021, which is the date that early giving begins. You don't want it to count your 2020 donations. You want to reset it for 2021. So resetting it to September 13th of this year will take you back to zero. Um, and you'll also want to reset your fundraising goal to however much you're looking to raise this year. Um, and I just want to note that you can change your goal at any time so you're not locked into it. Um, it's a display function that you have full control over. So you can do that in a lot of different ways. You can set a more conservative fundraising goal and increase it later, set some stretch goals. Um, or you can even remove the progress bar from your page if you're concentrating on other types of goals for your campaign. You don't necessarily have to have that goal and progress bar there at all. You can just remove that. So you can um, adjust that to look however you would want, but just make sure that you're going in and resetting these things um, so you don't have to worry about it as we get ready for early giving. Uh, we also recommend from year to year that you clean up your admins, um, which is something that you can do right in your profile settings. Um, a lot of organizations might have had turnover from one year to the next or had some volunteers helping out last year that aren't helping out this year. Um, and you may have new staff or volunteers who need access to edit your page and download reports. So as you're getting ready for this year's campaign, uh, take a few moments and check on who has access to your profile. Uh, just remove anybody who doesn't doesn't need access, um, add anybody who does need access, and just take a minute to clean it up and do a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, you can have a total of 10 admins for your page, so it's not an issue of space limitations. Uh, you always just want to make sure that you're actively managing who has access to your profile. On that note, there is some housekeeping that we urge you to do every year before the campaign. Um, and if you're new to the event, these are things that you'll most likely want to take a little bit of time to set up. Um, most of the stuff that you'll want to check is in your settings. Um, make sure that we have all of the correct information on the back end. So is your legal address up to date? Um, now, if you're using a fiscal sponsor, you may actually have your sponsor's legal address listed. So a lot of organizations might have GFAS's um, address listed but just take a moment, moment and make sure that we've got all of the correct legal information back there um, in your settings because we use that to manage your disbursements and other things related to your profile and your fundraising. Um, something that is hugely important is your disbursement information. Um, go into your settings and then disbursement settings and see what you've got listed there. Um, if you haven't set up EFT, we highly recommend doing that and check on the bank account that is linked. Um, now, if you're sponsored by Global Federation of Animal Sanctuaries, you may not recognize the, the bank account that's there. You'll see the last four um, numbers um, and that's because it's connected to their account and their disbursement process is a little bit different. They'll receive the initial disbursement and then send it on to you. Um, but if you're accepting your disbursement directly because you have a 501c3 status or you're working with a different uh, fiscal sponsor, just make sure that you have the correct um, bank account listed there because uh, we do have a we do check on this year to year because this is a smaller crowd and we want to make sure that everybody has uh, something set up that makes sense. Um, but if your you know fiscal sponsors bank account changed, we won't necessarily know that. So just do your due diligence and make sure that we have all the correct information so that we can get your payout to you as soon as possible without any wrinkles. 
So moving on to the look of your page, uh, your theme is where you can really easily refresh the look of your page. Uh, your logo should be a one to one ratio, meaning that it's square. And if you don't have one, be sure to add one. Um, as I mentioned before, it can be worth refreshing it even if you do have one and just making it look updated for 2021. Um, you can also update your banner image here. And while we do have an image library, library that has some stock images in it, I really highly recommend using a picture from your sanctuary to make your page really pop. Again, it's the first thing people see when they look at your page. So it really should represent your organization and all of you have fantastic photographs that you can use. Um, you can also use a filter to add a wash of color that can make it more in the background or you can even adjust the color using the filter. Um, and that can be a really great way to make your banner image look fantastic as well. Um, you have the option to also pick a theme color, which you can choose to match your branding for your, your sanctuary um, or the overall design of your, of your page. And that's an easy way that you can refresh the look of your page as well. That carries through your page, your donate button, your fundraise button, button and so on and so forth. So you'll see that theme color pop up as people navigate your page. Um, as I mentioned, your story is really the centerpiece of your profile. It's really what it's all about. So we recommend showing it some love each year. Um, we have a simple inline text editor. If you can create a Microsoft Word document, you can definitely use these tools. Um, and you can also add some formatting like headers and lists to break up the text. Um, one thing I, I do want to mention is that most people get really visually overwhelmed by a big wall of text. So I do recommend using these tools to break up the text so that it's skimmable since most people uh, will actually just be skimming your story. You want to make sure that they can find information and understand it um, easily and using headers and bulleted lists can really help with that. Um, and you can also use images and video to do this. Um, and you can really do a lot of really great visual story, storytelling just within your page's story. Um, almost all of the sanctuaries that participate in this event have amazing visuals. So use them to tell the story of the work that you do and why you do it. Um, and really, the more interesting and compelling that you make your story on your page, the more likely are people to actually stay and read it and stay on your page and explore. And the longer they stay, the more likely they are to make a donation. So it really does pay off to make sure that your story looks good and tells a compelling tale about what your sanctuary does and get, gives them a call to action to donate. So leaves them with the impression that you're worth supporting and they understand what you do after they read your story. Um, on the subject of visual storytelling, we know that a lot of you use social media to do that and to really put your photos out there. Um, so you can e integrate the work that you do on your social media channels to add to your profile on Giving Day for Apes. So any new Instagram posts will show up on your profile when you integrate your account. Um, you can also um, add a Facebook gallery if you'd like. And you can also manually upload some images that will help bolster the overall story that you're telling about your organization and make your page a little bit more dynamic and interesting to users. People love photos, um, so definitely adding some media and make, making it a little bit more rich in terms of the types of content you're offering is a really great way to make sure that people are really staying on your page and exploring what you have to offer. So before we wrap things up, I do have a few topics that are a little bit more technical, but very important. Um, the first is understanding your donations and disbursements and how you can access that information. Um, when you receive an, a donation for Giving Day for Apes, everybody who's listed as an admin for your organization will get an email that notifies you. Um, one thing that can be helpful is setting up some sort of process for that um, because you'll have a lot of donations coming in. Um, so just be aware of that every time you get a donation, you will get a notification. Um, a lot of email services like um, Gmail will thread them together for you very nicely, um, but you may just want to make some effort to figure out how you're going to manage that so you're not overwhelmed with notification emails on the big day. Um, and one thing that always happens every giving day is that people uh, will respond to that email we send them to thank the donor um, for making their donation. But unfortunately, that goes to our support team. Um, so you'll need to actually go into your donation report to get the donor's email address and contact them to thank them. So that is under reports on your dashboard. And it is a real time feed of your donation. So as soon as somebody completes a transaction and completes their donation, you'll be able to find them in your donation report. 
um, though there are only a few key things that you'll see on the actual screen. The real details, the nuts and bolts of each transaction um, are in the spreadsheet that you download of your donation report. So if you opted to collect addresses or you wanna see any dedications, you'll need to download that spreadsheet to find that information because we just don't have space for it in the display, but it is all housed there in the spreadsheet. Um, when the event is over, you'll also be able to find the breakdown of your disbursement in your disbursement report. Now for organizations who are outside of the US and using uh, Global Federation of Animal Sanctuaries as a fiscal sponsor, that process is going to look a little bit different than sanctuaries that are located within the US or have their own 501c3 status. Um, but you will be able to get a disbursement report um, and will be able to see the breakdown of everything that's being sent to you, everything that's included in that disbursement, um, as well as a breakdown of any fees um, and you can also see refunds that may be needed to be issued and so on and so forth. So literally everything that's related to your disbursement, you can find in your disbursement report. Um, and just as a side note on that topic, donations on Mighty Cause are no refund um, because people do receive a tax receipt as soon as they complete their donation. Uh, but sometimes someone makes an honest mistake and accidentally donates twice and we'll reverse that for them if they contact us. Um, but you can see all of that activity in your disbursement report. So you'll just just want to know where that is so that when you get that disbursement in your bank account or you get that uh, transfer from GFAST, you understand what's included in that. Uh, so use that to understand your payout. Uh, sometimes the donation report can be a little bit messy because of uh, you might get several disbursements. So just check your disbursement report as soon as you get your, your payout and you'll understand what's included in that. And while we urge you to direct as many donations as you possibly can through Mighty Cause, just to make sure that they count for the event and help you win prizes um, and help you in your leaderboard position, you can offer or enter offline gifts as well. Um, again, these don't count for leaderboard totals or any prizes, but they do of course matter to your sanctuary. They count for your sanctuary and the work that you do. And they're part of the overall fundraising efforts for Giving Day for Apes. So if you get cash or check donations, um, you can definitely definitely add them as offline gifts right from your dashboard, and you'll see them tracked in your offline donation report. Um, so these do count on the total for your organization's profile. Um, so you'll see those added towards your goal on your progress bar, and you can feel free to log those just to show the public how much you've raised, including cash and checks um, on your your organization profile, even those that though they don't count for leaderboards and they won't help you win any of the hourly prizes, you do have the option to include and log any offline gifts that you may receive um, through uh, your offline donation report. And you can access that through your regular donation report as well. So your checkout flow is something you have quite a bit of control over and you can use to bolster your fundraising um, when you use your checkout flow well. Um, this has been pulled out, uh, as I mentioned before, and it's now super easy to find on your dashboard. So make sure that you get in there, understand what the options are, and make it updated for 2021. Um, you can use custom donation amounts and descriptions to reinforce your impact in your campaign messaging. Uh, so for instance, if you want to encourage all of your donors to give at least $25, you can make that your lowest suggested donation amount and tell the donor what that amount helps per, your sanctuary provide to help them con, to help convince them to give in that amount when they're at the critical moment of actually deciding how much they want to give. Um, people who donate to Giving Day for Apes are obviously people who care a lot about the apes you're caring for at your sanctuary. So for instance, if that $25 would help you provide a week of enrichment activities for the apes at your sanctuary, you can use that to really push them toward giving in the amounts that you want them to. It's also a great way to push them up um, most people are not pushed down, but it's very easy to use those impact descriptions to push them up to a higher amount and increase the amount that they give that you raise overall. Um, and you can also enable address collection. You can ask a custom question. Um, you can enable dedications and designations if you have any funds that you'd like to give people the option of donating to specifically. Um, and you can pre out, preview the whole checkout process to make sure that it's not too cumbersome for your donors so you don't have to make a test 
donation um, to see what the whole process is like, you can go through that process in your checkout flow menu. Um, and this, this is also where you'll update your thank you message and your thank you page. So these are all very small details, but they do matter a lot. So it's really worth the effort to put these things in order as you plan for your campaign, um, just so that you're supported with all of this infrastructure as you move forward and move into some of the more complex fundraising initiatives that we'll talk about in subsequent webinars. Um, also, Mighty Causes support team is here to help you leading up to the event. We're available to you um, and we're also available to your donors. So I wanted to make sure that you knew that as well. If on the day somebody has a question about a receipt or a donation, you don't have to field that. You can send that to our support team. Um, so if you're lost on your profile and you're looking for something and for the life of you, you cannot find it or you need some assistance making something happen on your page, um, please don't suffer in silence or think that you need to figure it out on your own. We don't want you to be frustrated. We want to help you. Uh, so our support staff is available to assist you. So please feel free to email them with any platform related questions at support at mightycause.com. Uh, we are a Monday through Friday operation and we are on East Coast time in the US. So we are open uh, from nine to five, although you might get answers outside of that window. Um, and your response won't be immediate, but our team is really on the ball and they're really trying to make sure Sure that you get the support that you need quickly. So you'll usually get a response within 24 business hours um, to any tickets that you submit. Um, and you can also give us a call at this number if you're more of a phone call person. Um, and it's I just wanted to mention that I'm happy to help you, but our support team is much faster um, and much better at assisting you with technical issues. So if you have a technical question, please don't be shy about reaching out to support. They are here to help you. And before we jump into the Q&A, um, I hope that I will see all of you at our next training webinar, which is on Tuesday, August 10th at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, this will be a big one. Uh, we'll be talking about prize structure and how to win the prizes that are being offered this year. There's always really generous prizes from Global Federation of Animal Sanctuary and the sponsors. Um, so you really want to check out this webinar. And if you're going to only attend one webinar, this is a really great one to attend. So you can register for that now on the Giving Day for Apes site. Um, it's in the nonprofit toolkit, and I hope to see you all there. Um, and just as another note, I'm going to get this uploaded to YouTube as soon as I possibly can and add this recording as well as the slide deck to the nonprofit toolkit. So that is where you will find this um, if you wanted to share it with somebody at your organization to get onboarded to this year's event. Um, but you'll find that there. Um, probably by the end of the day, I hope. Um, so if you have any questions for either me or Jackie, um, you have us available um, and you can just put that into the Q&A box. I don't see anything there right now, um, but you have our full attention. So let us know if you have any questions at all related to this year's event. Um, and after I've spoken for, I think, 30 some minutes straight, um, Jackie, did you have anything that you wanted to add or say regarding the information that I just presented? Any Anything to augment? <laughs> you know, Linda, there was just one thing, and I remember we mentioned it last year, but it's worth saying again. Um, I completely agree with your recommendation when you're setting up text on your um, fundraising page to you know break it up have headings um, things like that also keep in mind that not all people are looking at your pages on a desktop and that's more data that we can look at from past events and I just looked at it while you were speaking and the desktop versus mobile breakdown for donations was 55 percent mobile so most of these are coming through maybe tablets or on people's cell phones and so I always recommend when you're fixing up your page and getting it ready for a new year. See how it looks on your phone. Awesome. Um, I, gosh, the Q&A box on Zoom doesn't want to cooperate with me. So I see that we have a question um, and I just wanted to, I had to unshare for a minute to get to the questions box, unfortunately. Oh, uh, this was a thank you so much from Piper. Oh, thank you, Piper. It's always great to hear that it was it was helpful. Um, and I know that this one, the content was a little bit dry, so it's not, you know, the really heavy duty 
fundraising content, um, but we are going to be doing that kind of content in the next couple of webinars um, and really drilling down on how you can make this day a huge success um, and win prizes and really make it worth the, the, the effort. Um, I think it will be for most of you anyway. Most of the sanctuaries that participate uh, raise a lot of money and do a lot of great work to uh, support their organization. Um, but yeah, the, the next few webinars should be more uh, strategy focus so that's always uh, I think those are more fun personally um, so I, I really appreciate you guys spending this time with us today to get onboarded um, and to, to get started for this year I'm just really excited to see what everyone is going to achieve because every year you guys have just blown past every goal that we've set for you you've just done incredible every single year like the participants really do a great job so i'm i'm personally very excited to see the the fundraising campaigns that you all come up with and i'm always really excited to see your videos and your photos i love them Linda, do, we had already also talked about um, just your perception of how giving days are going this year. I mean, we are still in the midst of COVID, and I know you're going to share just some insights of what you're seeing about giving trends. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry I didn't include that. Um, but yeah, there's uh, so giving events uh, across the board are doing really well. Um, we got some of the data together for 2020, and overall, giving was huge in 2020. Um, a lot of organizations, even ones that were not directly assisting with COVID relief or related to healthcare or anything that was COVID related, we know that during a time of crisis, people's instinct is to give. Um, that's That gives them some sense of control and helping when things feel out of control. So even uh, animal uh, sanctuaries, uh, animal shelters, um, theaters, they all saw a lot of people really rise to the occasion and support them uh, during a difficult time. So all of our giving events were huge last year. Um, I don't think I had any that failed to meet their goal. Most of them far exceeded um, what they had projected uh, and told us that they wanted to do. So giving is strong. Um, the thing that I will note uh, for this year, Giving Day for Apes also had a huge, um, huge event last year. It was a new milestone. I think it was like eight 50, which is on the way to a million raised, which would be fantastic, especially with just 30 some orgs. Um, but last year was a big year for donor acquisition. So we had a lot of people giving to nonprofits for the very first time. Um, and they made uh, a lot of gifts. Uh, a lot of people just kind of gave to any nonprofits they could think of. Um, so it was a huge year for acquisition. It was actually when you look at the metrics, um, we kind of we took over several years worth of expected growth in acquisition in just one year. Um, so that means that 2021 is really going to be all about donor retention and making sure that those people who may have made their first gift in 2020 come back again. That's really going to be the test of whether or not all of the fantastic fundraising that happened in 2020 um, is actually long-term sustainable, um, is getting those people to come back. So those tools that you have on Mighty Cause, like the donor retention report, where you can just quickly pull a list of people who gave in 2020 but haven't given yet in 2021, those are going to be really key um, because you want to make sure that everybody that came to support you last year, because last year was a huge year for Giving Day for Apes, um, that they come back and they make another gift this year. Um, and a lot of people made smaller donations last year. So uh, we had a lot of people giving in smaller amounts um, and getting those people to come back and continue to make gifts and maybe pushing them up to make a slightly bigger um, donation is really going to be the key to success in 2021. Um, because unfortunately, what we see is that when we make gains in donor acquisition, meaning we got new people to make donations for the first time, we often lose them to attrition in the following year meaning that we don't retain them. Um, so we've really worked hard at Mighty Cause to provide some tools um, that will help you easily retain donors um, and make sure that you know exactly who you need to be contacting and you can send them some dedicated emails that just note that they've given in the past. Um, you can even do some one-on-one -on -one outreach depending on how big the list is. Um, but there's a lot of tools at your disposal through the Mighty Cause platform that are really designed to help you engage those donors 
dollars and bring them back to make another gift because that's really what success in 2021 is going to be all about. Great. And I know um, all of our participants always have such amazing stories to tell. So we're looking forward to seeing all of them. Thank you, Linda. Absolutely. Um, well, I think that's it for the q and I haven't seen any other questions come through, um, but uh, I think all of you on the webinar know Jackie and I, so if you have any questions in follow-up or any questions that are specific to your uh, sanctuary, you can feel free to contact one of us. If it's a technical question, you can contact support, um, and we'll make sure that you all have access to this recording and the slides as soon as possible. Um, thank you all so much for spending this time with us today, um, and I really look forward to seeing what you you can accomplish this year. And thank you again to uh, Jackie for joining me for this presentation. Take care. Bye-bye.